Levon, uh, you won your game against Vincent Keimer. Uh, very, very beautiful game. Uh, did you like it? Yes, I thought I was playing well. Uh, I thought I was uh, putting pressure, so I was happy with my playing. Your first move, D4. Can you explain to us your I thought behind it? Firstly, I think you guys put up a wrong position and analyzed for a few minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, we analyzed for quite a long time. I think we had maybe well two minutes to, to figure out. And then once uh, I said, okay, I'll figure out something uh, over the board. And then once I came over the board, uh, what we analyzed, I think, was like a four G3 ideas. Yes. But this doesn't give anything at all. Also, the players with black were analyzing F4 and E4. I yes. think they were not looking at D4. Uh, why I thought D4 makes sense? Because... Uh, I want to stop, uh, like, I, I want to develop my queen first and then decide where I'm going to put my bishops. So I thought d4 probably should be met by d5. And if he goes f5, then I have the c3 knight d2, which I thought was very interesting. And I'm trying to play for e4, early e4. You know, not, uh, not really um, opening my plans with the bishops. Because if I play g3 early, I can never play h3, bishop h2. Mm. And here, this was the this was the idea behind this knight d2. I'm trying to play e4 quickly, and uh, if he doesn't allow me, he plays d5 himself. Then the bishop comes to h2, and then I develop the other bishop through g4. Wow! So. Because generally, uh, in such positions, when you have bishop on h1 and g1, everyone wants to play f4 g3 and yes. sort of open this. But you kind of thought differently here. Yeah, I thought that if it's possible to to. Uh, come up with something original and I managed I think and then uh, in the game uh, there were, like he put his knight on d6 and I think that just made it very tough for him right to to get anything and you got this grip on the c5 square yes yes it was very important I thought that uh, I mean generally you don't want to put your knights behind your pawns like that I mean only if you really see something like some real opportunity uh, to take advantage but in the game, my bishops got open, and his queen was stuck forever. So it, it, it was. Uh, of course, I didn't play the the best, the the most precise moves. This e4 move. Yes, but even with uh, normal play, the position looked uh, very difficult to hold. I mean, he had to play like a genius at some point, uh, which is not easy with very little time on the clock. And at some point, you found these moves, queen g7. Very pretty, yeah. and rook takes d6. I think you would have enjoyed this finish. Of course. <laughs> well, uh, I saw it while I, while I was looking at e4, because otherwise e4 is not is imprecise mm. because it allows black to bring the rook into the game. But uh, I saw that rook e6 is not possible, and then this is just crushing. And now uh, you take on uh, Karuana, but majorly you are in the semi-finals. It's not been easy, right, to, to reach the semi-finals and this tournament is quite tough. Also, the format is very sure. tiring. Yes, yes. It's, uh, I mean, uh, I go and have a nap after each game because, uh, you know, you think from the first move, it's very unusual and you don't have any, like, ground to, you know, to hang on to because it's a new position and new patterns. Everything is new. Like... In yesterday's position, I, I was happy that I realized early on that knight should never go to f6. Black mm. so should always develop through knight h6. Right. But it, right. Uh, it's, uh, it's not that easy to understand those things. I mean, Ding just played knight f6 on move 2. So yeah. it's not easy for even the best to understand all the intricacies. Yes, but I think uh, my advantage is that I, I have a big experience mm. from playing uh, the mice tournaments. Uh, they were. But was there chess 960 there? Yes, of course. Ah. Uh, yeah, Hans Walter, you know, he's such a big uh, promoter of the game. I think one of the first uh, people who really loved uh, this game and did everything for it. Fantastic. And uh, I want to ask you about your friend who comes with you every day and many people <laughs> are watching those videos and seeing. His name is Thomas. Can you yes. tell us a bit about him? So Thomas is a very good friend of mine. Uh, he's uh, from uh, Germany, from a city near Frankfurt, Oberösel, and uh, he's uh, he's a former High Court judge of the province of Hessen. So he's extremely knowledgeable in different parts of art, uh, cinema, and uh, he's I think 2,200 in chess. Oh, like that. Yeah, wow. So he's, 
He's a very competitive chess player. I, I loved how when you were alone, he came there and sat. Just like a moral support, like yesterday when you were analyzing. Yes. Which was very nice, you know, he just sat there. Yes, and we've, we've been to many tournaments together with Thomas. Uh, I think I won in Norway. I won in uh, Dusseldorf. I won many events where he was present because he's a very easygoing person and a very nice person to be around. Amazing. And Levon, in the evenings, we have this dinner and everyone's there. There are these uh, assigned spaces, different cuisines. How do you like this atmosphere? Oh, it's amazing. You know, uh, I mean, we used to have a similar tournament in uh, Monaco, which was the... The Amber. The Amber, yes. Uh, and it, this was, uh, of course, for every chess player, it was always a great privilege to play one of them. You know, And uh, now uh, we see this... Uh, uh, extremely well organized and luxurious tournaments uh, are coming back and uh, yeah, Jan uh, Bittner is a, is a I, I mean he's a very easygoing guy and a very pleasant person to talk to so I think um, hopefully this will continue for a long time and I can really tell that uh, he loves the game mm. and he loves the players which is making me happy lastly I want to ask you with all your experience how do you think that chess 960 becomes like more and more popular? Well, I mean, uh, one thing I know for sure that every single player loves the game. Every mm. single player of the elite. Uh, Magnus loves it. Uh, you know, Fabiano, I, I mean, Hikaru, I think almost everybody loves this game. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Ding would also love it. Uh, Maybe if he had some practice, maybe he's lacking the practice. But this is refreshing and uh, enjoyable and uh, a deep game from the move number one. So uh, this this is the future, I think, and I hope uh, it will be a near future. Brilliant, Levon. Uh, take good rest and all the best for the semifinals. Thank you.